Okay, guys. So this is the part two of our tutorial series. So this is where we left off the last time. We created our home route. Well, in this video, we are going to look at handling 404 errors. So let's look at an example. Slash, I don't know, something, anything at all. And right now, this route doesn't exist. There is no handler for this particular route. So we get this really um, plain looking page that just tells us this page can't be found. You know, so in a real app, this isn't what you would want to display. Um, you won't want to show this. So Leaf has prepared a, um, should I say, a handler for this. So all we have to do is app let's set 404. Well, with version 2.0, we can just leave this like this. So app set 404. So we can save this and run. And this will display the default 404 page for leaf. So we get 404 page not found. This neatly styled 404 page. But then in our case, this won't work because we are building an API and this isn't what we want to return. So we can just simply pass in a function, a callable callback function, whatever I choose to call it. So echo, um, we all know APIs or should I say most APIs use JSON. So we want to encode something, I don't know. So maybe message, um, page not found, oops. So page not found, something like this. Um, let me space this out, save, and then we can view this. And then this time we should get our JSON message, page not found exactly, like this. Right. So as I said before, we'll be setting up our basic routes. At least we'll look at different types of routes. So we'll look at get requests, post requests, um, we'll set up the basic routes. All right. So I'll say up. So as I said before, users would be able to log in and sign up. So we can have something like get slash auth slash login this is the route i want to use you can actually use any route you want to but then i'll just go with this so auth login um i have my callback function and then i'll just echo um what should i echo login all right and then i'll do the same for um same thing for registration so auth slash register all right but then these are actually supposed to be post requests so we don't use get request for the for these type of requests so we simply say app post but then of course we can't test these inside the browser so we have to use a, um what do you call them thing no interceptors or something like that um what i use is postman um you don't really have to install an app you can just get the chrome extension um it sort of opens like an app you know i think they call them chrome apps or something like that well that's not really important for now so we just have to choose our post request http not s localhost 7000 slash auth 
slash login um i'll send that and i should get login exactly and then the same for register All right and it should say register all right i wonder why it's so slow All right so register so i don't know you can see we are using auth here and auth over there so we can actually do something we can group these under an auth route um so we can do this we can say up mount so mount simply creates a collection of routes first parameter is um, the routes under which we want to create the app collection and then the next is a callback function as usual but then this time we want to be able to use this app variable inside our callback function to do that we simply say use and then we pass in app before we enter the function itself so i'll just copy these two and then i paste them in here All right and then i just take off this auth so now it's just slash login and slash register but then they are inside this mount slash auth so if i go to slash auth slash register i should still get the same thing because all i've done is i just grouped these two under auth because they both start like that so you might not see how useful this is now but then in larger applications routes are actually put in groups like this so you can have your auth group maybe a user group and other groups all depending on the size of your app all right all right so after signing a user in and all we need to get the user's notes um so in this i'll create a notes group so a new group for notes um right so i'll name this notes and the user should be able to get all notes so that will be slash notes slash all and that should actually be a get request so echo notes a user should be able to create requests so i'll say slash notes slash new post request um new note um read yeah so should be able to read notes so that will be note id now this where we get to dynamic routes so to create a dynamic route the simplest way would simply would be to open curly braces and then we pass in something like this the name doesn't actually really matter but then you should use variables that sort of make sense so note id to actually get the notes we want so i'll just echo note id you won't actually be doing this in a real app but then i'm just creating the route so so we've done our create read um all right so i'll do another one for edit that will also be a post request so edit note or something like that edit note by the way you edit a single note so it should also take in an id or it should be id slash edit um all right i'll do that i'll do it that way so id slash edit to edit a particular note and don't forget to pass in the id over